every restaurant encounters downtime. And when there is downtime, that means the restaurant is losing money. But what if there is an app that connected hungry stomachs to deep discounts in restaurants during their downtime? I'm RJ Ledesma, and the bright idea is Eatigo. Let's face it, Filipinos don't just love food, they adore it. We eat just about anything and everything, and we always find an excuse to eat. But if you're having a hard time deciding where to eat, or have been wanting to dine in a restaurant you're not sure you can afford, then one app may work best for you. And we're very happy to have with us here tonight the founders of Eatigo over here. We've got Michael Cluzel. I hope I didn't, I didn't uh, massacre Perfect. your last name. And for you, Louis. Louis. I'll call you Louis because yeah. I might massacre your name when I, <laughs> when, I, when I use the Thai, when I say it in Thai. So I'm uh, very happy that you guys are over here right now. And it's very rare that we have a chance to actually speak uh, to the founders and, and two founders at that and still very friendly with each other. <laughs> Up to oh, today. That, yeah. That's great. So <laughs> let's step back a bit more. And you had some very interesting war stories as to how you got this business off the ground. What I really want to hear is, okay, how did you guys actually come together and, and think about this business? How did you find yourself in Thailand? So ETO has four co-founders, mm -hmm. uh, out of which three have been working together in previous uh, lives uh, mm -hmm. for almost 10 years. Okay. So it's a very closely knit team. The basic insight, the idea to Etigo came from looking at a at a chart. Okay. Looking at a chart that showed uh, capacity utilization for hotels, airlines, and restaurant. I see. And what you see is that hotels and airlines they're very good at capacity utilization. They run a business at about 80 percent capacity mm -hmm. utilization. But restaurants, they really suck at this. Uh, they, they have on average a capacity utilization of about 30%. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. if you take a step back and you see the global market for sit-down restaurants is about 2.6 trillion US dollars. And this is a 2.6 trillion dollar market that operates at 30% efficiency. And we just told ourselves, man, that is a nice cake. And it's a very big and efficient market. It's global, it's blue ocean, nobody is serving that. You see the um, sort of like booking website like agoda.com has been doing so really, really good and been like growing at sort of, sort of like um, really fast rate. I see, but you I see, see like normal reservation, uh, food reservation has been growing up. Then I kept asking myself why. Then I realized that when you make a reservation at agoda.com, it actually guarantee the best discount, best price guarantee, right? I see. Okay. So basically instead of sort of like calling the restaurant, um, going straight and doing walk into to the hotel, you knew if you make a reservation via Agoda, you know that you get best, best price guarantee. I see. But if you make a reservation via platform, it's actually no different between you actually calling up the restaurant to make a reservation or actually booking through the app. Yeah, but then you, then you, follow, you subscribe to that philosophy that basically that, you know, yeah, that's the, the capacity yeah. really is you're just, you're just utilizing full capacity. Yield management is what we do in an Yield app, right? Okay. So we're connecting empty stomachs with empty tables. And we do it via a system of time-based discounts. And, you know, yield management is not something we invented. Is something that's been around for 40 years. Mm -hmm. It was pioneered by American Airlines. Every airline in the world is doing it. Every hotel in the world is doing it, but no restaurant. Oh, and we came to the great insight. Great we, insight. The insight behind Itigo is that an empty seat in a restaurant is very akin to an empty seat on an airplane. I see. At a specific time. Exactly. Yeah. It, every hour, your rest, your restaurant incurs its fixed cost. That's your great. rent is incurred. Your overheads are incurred, your electricity cost is incurred. And in that hour, if a table goes empty, the contribution to that fixed cost by that table is zero. Zero, yes, exactly. And we propose our merchants, why don't you let me take this inventory in distress that is currently at 0% profitability and replace it with an inventory that has a positive profitability. You make more money. I see. Not just more revenue, but more profit. This is fun and challenging at the same time. Because if nobody has done it before, um, there's no playbook. If you want to do a clone of Uber, you can literally download the playbook from the <laughs> internet. That's right. You want to do Itigo and you're the first one, there is no playbook. So you have to figure out everything. The idea is so elegant for me that you're just taking the idea of, it's simple in terms of you're just taking yield management and moving to restaurants, but it's also 
excruciatingly difficult at the, at the starting point. And that's what I'm guessing because you had some interesting stories when you started off this business. At the beginning, you, you have to sell something to a, a merchant, a restaurant that doesn't understand yield management yet. Mm -hmm. You're asking them to do things, give certain discounts at certain times they've never done before. Every merchant on eTigo offers 50% off every day. Not the whole day, but at some parts in the day. And we are working with a lot of merchants that have never given these kind of discounts. They, they have fears, they have uh, um, concerns, they need to understand it. And they are not techie or, 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 or mathematicians. So if you talk about complex algorithms, you scare them. Yes, so yes. you need to, to evangelize the merchants and really explain that, uh, that process. It was a good feeling to get the first restaurant on board, uh, but the better feeling was to see them live on the platform okay. and bookable. And if you do something for the first time, there is no shortcut to experience. Okay, now tell me, when did the business start developing traction? When did you know that you were starting to, to make it in Thailand? Oh, I think um, that there's some indication, I mean, because um, when we're uh, start, starting, obviously, we don't even know uh, uh, how to do our user acquisition. So um, what we did is that we started approaching an uh, agency and we basically start telling them, look, we try to do it ourselves, we try to do uh, Facebook advertising. And apparently the, the cost, our cost of uh, user acquisition was so low that agency never seen it before. So you really? started, yeah, because um, I think, we, well, generally when um, uh, a site like us, you start going to a restaurant with 50% discount, it require you uh, to buy some kind of coupon. For you, it's kind of if if you buy a coupon upfront, you get fifty percent off set meal. But we we definitely uh, we are giving away fifty percent off on every single item on the food menu for free. It's never been seen before. So I think it's something really new, and users just love it because there's no. It resonates yeah. with the user, and you know, for for customer acquisition, um, it has always been easy for us. We take all the pain on the merchant acquisition side, right? We ask our merchants, every single merchant, to you know comply with the eTigo playbook. We create a user experience that is very streamlined, mm -hmm. very repeatable, and it makes us slower in merchant acquisition, but it makes us really fast in user acquisition. I see. You had a circuitous route going to the Philippines. You said that you started off with um, Thailand, That's right. and the next yeah. country you went to was Singapore. 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 Well, then actually we done in two phases, right? Okay. Well, basically, Thailand and Singapore, we, we did it first. Because obviously, as I uh, told you earlier, we really wanted to be sort of like uh, number one in Asia. So we have to, uh, if it, if it business, I think from the day when we want to launch uh, Thailand and Singapore, because um, Thailand could be sort of like the example of the um, uh, developing country. Sort of like your springboard for developing countries. Yeah, right, exactly. Doing. So you went Thailand, um, Thailand, Singapore, next country was Hong Malaysia, Kong. Malaysia, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Hong Kong India, India, and then the Philippines. The Philippines. So, uh, what took you all this time to come over here? What were you looking for in the Philippines to make an ideal place for you to bring Etigo? An Etigo market should be a market with a dining out culture. I think Philippines has always been a tick for that, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, also, an Etigo market needs to be a market with a high discount affinity because if the people are looking for it, it makes our business yeah, easier. Discount, no this is discount the central over here. You know? <laughs> the third ingredient to make a good Etigo market is to have adequate mobile internet. Mm -hmm. penetration and that was something where we had some concerns with the Philippines in the in the past where we were wondering if the app would perform properly uh, um, across the, the city um, this is not the case anymore we've done extensive drive tests with our application we're very happy with the performance and we had the confidence at one point where we say okay no I think we're ready and uh, here we are Great, so very happy to have you in the Philippines. I like the shirt itself, uh, PH. Yes, Philippines. Yeah, Philippines, so it's great. So let's talk, about, let's talk a bit more about the actual app and how it works, but let's talk about that right after the break. And now Louis is going to show me the secret sauce behind Etigo. So first of all, let's go through the Etigo application. So first, download the app. Well, basically, okay. download the app. Um, well, once you sort of like kind of um, download the app and go through all the registration, so you, can, you come in here and the first thing you're going to be presented with is uh, the list of categories. Okay. So first of all, of course, you got to register your name, everything yeah, else. Okay. Right. Then once you're in, the different categories come out. Yeah. In the first page, basically, we have a list of categories. Okay. And in categories, there's two lists. So basically, you can choose what cuisine you would like would like to eat uh, today or which area would you want like to eat okay. today so obviously you see here you have Makati or you want to eat Japanese restaurant here I see okay and, great. and, and for, for the first time I think it might be a good idea for you to go to the top 50 
right? 50. So, yeah, okay. Yeah, you can see what actually the popular uh, in the platform now. So you can see here you have um, heat at Esa Chancrida Hotel, Ramenagi here, and Fireside, right? Let's okay. say that. And what is actually quite special about our app um, that set us apart from other reservations, you can see here, you can actually see the different discount. Okay, at a different times. Yeah, at different times. I see. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, as we mentioned earlier, right? Because depending on the uh, time you make, want to make reservation, the discount is different. Okay, I but, see. Okay, so let's say that um, we're going into Fireside. Obviously, we want to see tomorrow. So, how many days in advance can you actually book? Up to uh, one month. One month in advance. Yeah. Okay. So, when you go in, the, uh, we call this page a restaurant profile. In here, you can see uh, the, all the pictures here, and you can actually have a look at um, all the. Um, or the discount. I mean, the, the discounts are made that cuts across everything in the menu. Yep. Okay, just to make it easier, you can't pick and choose which one. Or all the food, or every single food item in the menu. Every single food item in the menu get the same discount. Discount. Yeah. Okay. At a specific time, you get the same discount. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, obviously, a bit like at the app, we have a bit information of about the restaurant. So we have the write up. Um, recommended menu, okay. because maybe you're new to this restaurant, you don't know what it to order. It shows you the discount level as well. Yeah, okay. we can see here, right, you get a discount 50%, and if you go in, how much will you have to pay? After re reviewing all the information, and you want to make a reservation, say, a reservation okay. and you see, wow, you get 50% discount at, um, at 5 o'clock. And you say you want to do it tomorrow for two people, and all you have to press next. And basically, we ask you really three um, simple information. We want to know your name, your phone number, and uh, your email. Okay. So, um, and once you provide this, just click, press confirm com reservation. Click here. And this can also be a same day thing. It does not be a month from now. You can, you, exactly. Let's say even an hour from now, you yep. can also do the same reservation. Yeah. And um, once you make a reservation, basically you can have um, instant, um, con um, instant confirmation. And all you have to do now is just turn up to the restaurant and say, "Look, I have um, a reservation you with each." You just you have to just show them this show them this one over here. Or yeah, just, they also have a copy over there in the. On the yeah, basically, once you make a reservation, we also send an SMS and the in-app notification to the restaurant as well, so the restaurant will know that you're coming at this time and what discount you have to give already. Uh, okay, right? okay, so they the, so they they know as well. Now, let's say, for example, on the part of the user. Um, what happens if he doesn't show up in the restaurant? Oh, you can always cancel, right? We okay. always treat the user as if that you're making reservation from a phone call. You can always make the um, same as any phone call reservation. You say, look, if you're not going, we ask you to have a good courtesy of actually... Um, and how many, how many minutes before the actual reservation can you cancel? Uh, Any time, right? Anytime. As I, as I uh, told you before, this is a bit like um, going to a restaurant and just uh, calling up the restaurant, you can't make it. But what we don't tolerate is we don't tolerate no show. No shows, okay. Yeah. Basically, we, we ask user, if you're not going to come, just, um, just can, uh, cancel your reservation. But if your uh, user do no show three times, we basically get a warning message from us. Hey, hey don't do this again. I see, right? I see. Now let's look behind the scenes. Now what's happening this time in terms of what, what you guys are doing. How do you determine what times uh, have the highest discount rate, what times uh, have the lower discount rates? I, I think uh, for every single restaurant, they have a um, uh, different business model. Let's say you have hotel buffet, right? Obviously, you know, with the hotel buffet, you know what is left at the end, mm -hmm. you have to throw it away anyway. So okay. when we work with a hotel buffet, for example, they tend to give us good um, good discount towards the end of the day. Okay, so more or less, it's just something to work out together uh, um, with the restaurant. With the restaurant, and I understand there's a certain algorithm that you guys have running as well. What does yeah. the algorithm determine for you guys? Well, so actually, it's not. Um, it's an algorithm. But it's actually our our, our knowledge because obviously we've been working with uh, um, 100,000 with um, I see, I the see. restaurant of their type already. We actually knew better than them what kind of discount. Basically, just, just the algorithm just translates what you guys understand yep. of, of how, how it works by now. Well, basically, we will ask the restaurant a few questions and say, look, um, um, how many seats do you have? Mm -hmm. um, how aggressive your discount want to be? And, and we basically use all the information we take from, from, from the restaurant and then we calculate it and we send it to, uh, to the merchant, to the uh, restaurant. I see. Yeah. I see. Now, this time around, when you, when you came here to the Philippines, um, how was it like? for you to be able to recruit the restaurants. Were they aware of the Etigo application? Was it easy to onboard them to become part of the Etigo uh, ecosystem? I think what we are quite lucky because I think the um, Philippines are uh, the last country that we launched. By, by this time, we're actually working with uh, several kind of regional players already. So we've been working with lots of hotels from, from Thailand, Singapore, and Hong Kong before. We can actually tell them, look, we are now opening a branch in the Philippines. Would you, uh, your, would you, your hotel would like to be on board as well? And we start from there, really. But I think um, the restaurant are quite excited 
Is it, it wasn't that hard to sign them up? When you well, comparing them. to when we went first launch, yeah. Of course, that's right. Yep. But let's say right now, uh, like you said, you're almost two weeks in. How many restaurants do you guys have from the Philippines? Almost 200 now. Almost 200 yep. restaurants. So, and of those 200, uh, some of them are, I guess, chains or franchises, so they can be more than 200. Yeah, exactly right. And that's why we, um, I think some of the chains want to just to test the water a bit, but hopefully we could ramp up all this number really quickly in the future. Wow, very exciting. Yeah. I mean, it looks like you guys are, are on, like you said, you guys are, uh, uh, on, on the go, making sure that you know you might hit your goal of actually breaking even here very soon in the Philippines. Yeah, I think one other thing that I forgot to mention is that every single restaurant that's in our platform, that's going to be 50 percent uh, discount on every single restaurant every day too. Every day. Every day. So every single restaurant that they now perform, you can see 50% discount every single day. So we've got to download the, the application sooner than later. Yeah. Now with Itigo's aggressive expansion, not just in the Philippines, but in other parts of Asia as well, the question we really need to ask is, are you guys making money? But let's find that out after the break. Itigo saves you time and money whenever you go hungry. Now, let's find out how much Itigo makes out of giving away big discounts. Finally, we come to the most exciting part of the show and that's to find out, are you guys making money? But before we go into that one, let's go back a bit more to the, to the start of the, of the whole uh, Itigo. And how is it like for you guys when you were starting off? Let's say, for example, were you all bootstrapping at the very start? And how is it like for you guys? We were bootstrapping actually for quite a long time. We bootstrapped for about two years. Two years. We went 26 months without any salary. Wow. Yeah. So I always say, you know, we, we, we bled on the logo for two years <laughs> to make sure it stays nice and red. And, but I think it's a very healthy experience mm -hmm. because, see, if you put a significant chunk of your own money into your own business, mm -hmm. You spend it differently than that's you right, spend right. investor agree. money. I, I agree. And it creates a very healthy focus on profitability and sustainability of the business. It's not just all for growth, it's not just all for numbers, it is a business that has to make sense. Okay. I can choose at any time if I want to be profitable or not, right? Because it depends on how much I spend on marketing. Okay. But whenever I, if you tell me be profitable, I can say fine, I'm profitable this month, right? If you tell me grow, I can grow. I will just invest more in marketing, but it will always be a sensible, sustainable investment because I will always make more money from a customer than it costs me to acquire that customer. Sounds like an economist developing your business model right there. I'm an economist. Why... <laughs> I'm sorry. Guilty as charged. So I can see where that happened. And finally, where was the point where you decided to say, okay, let's stop bootstrapping. It's time for us to take on some money from the outside. Was that the point where you said, we have to grow? I think the capital that we took in was acceleration capital, right? Um, if you're doing something for the first time like Itigo, mm -hmm. at the beginning, you have the benefit of flying under the radar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about being copied because nobody knows what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You have time to learn your business. But at one point, you are on the radar. And once you're on the radar, you don't have that benefit of time anymore. At one point, when you understand it, you need to move and you need to move quickly. And in order to move quickly and to go aggressively into new markets, you need more capital than the cash flow that your already profitable markets can produce. And that's when, you know, investor money came. And sensible. how many years into the business did you finally bring an investor? You said 26 two, months? I think two, two, two years. years. A, good, a good two years. Two, two a, good, years. A, good, a good two years till you, till yeah. you brought them in. And that was like a sort of like a group decision to, to, well, to bring them in. Okay. Obviously, I mean, uh, any plan you make in uh, as, um, any business will take longer than you expected to actually use more money than, than you expected as well. But I think within two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yeah. Yep. Now, also right now, let's take a look now at, at the local competitive scene when it comes to what you guys are doing. So basically, uh, you're doing yield management, which is basically giving right. discounts at slack times or the low times of, for the restaurants. And there are similar companies right now which have that business model, which basically offer uh, discounts for, for slack times. Um, what makes you guys different, people will ask. Okay, I think um, in what we do, we're a global first mover. And let me show you how that is the case. I mean, I think there's basically two kinds of applications. There is engagement applications and get shit done applications. Okay. We're the latter. Engagement applications is application you like Yelp or Facebook, mm -hmm. where people come and spend a lot of time on it. Food discovery 
has a lot of you know players in that market where ah, people okay. write about it. we're not in the business of doing reviews we're not in the business of content creation we're in the business of transactions and um, I think we are very unique in what we do in the sense that on eTigo there are no coupons no vouchers that you have to buy okay uh, there is no subscription model the user never has to pay there is no credit card information uh, all the monetization from us happens on the merchant level and that creates a very unique situation for the user users don't like to pay for discounts users want products and services preferably for free. Okay. I think the user has been loving our apps for, uh, you can judge by the, uh, all the comment and review they've been uh, leaving behind uh, on our app store. So I think we got um, the average of 4.4, 4.5, which is right, one of the highest for the transactional app in, there is, right, in, in terms of startup. And you were telling me earlier on something very interesting that actually here in the Philippines, you've been up for about what, a week or two here locally? About two weeks now. About yeah. two weeks now, and it's almost surpassing the business that you're doing in, in Hong Kong, is that right? No, I think, I was just saying that, well... Almost? See, I mean, I it's clearly yeah. one of the best launches that yeah. we've ever had. I see. And, and, and we're on track in our first month to seat over 100,000 people. Yeah. Wow. And, 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 and that is a lot better than we were planning to start. Okay. So, yeah. so, so we have... So good, good problem to have. It's yeah. a good problem to have. We've completely shattered our, our, our own forecast. And uh, we're happy about this, right? Because I think the user really Filipinos love their food, but they also love value. And I think this is where I think we, we strike a note that we provide this value with great discounts at great restaurants that for the user are completely free. And so the way to perceive, I mean, for me, the way I perceive it is not so much a reservation. I mean, as a Filipino, you're not selling to me the reservation, you're selling to me the big, the deep discounts I can get. Absolutely. And that, so, because reservation for me is something that, that's sort of alien in terms yeah. of the idea of what yeah. you have to do. Now, moving forward, I mean, you, you've been expanding across Asia and uh, maybe across Southeast Asia. What do you, where do you guys see this business in about five years? Do you plan to do an IPO? Do you plan to exit? What do you guys plan to do with uh, Itigo? Mm, it took us two years to learn and understand our business and basically prove a product market fit and the basic, you know, that's the sausage factory is working. Uh, we did this in Thailand and Singapore, and now in the last four months, we expanded into four new countries. We launched wow. four countries in four months. It was uh, hard work. Fun. <laughs> did you lose sleep, lose hair? What did you guys lose? What? Not this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I looked like this before already, but uh, certainly a few gray more. But uh, no, I mean, it was Malaysia, Hong Kong, India, and the Philippines in very short succession. And I think um, it's still early in the game. Uh, we are now in six markets. Uh, we've ventured into India now. Mm -hmm. And I would say if we look a few years ahead, I would say um, our ambition is to be a leading player in Asia, mm -hmm. period. And, and whether this ends in a, in a trade sale or in an IPO, or, uh, we'll have to see. Right? I think there are so many scenarios how this can play out. For us now, it's fun to run this business. And as long as it's as fun to run this business as it is now, we definitely want to continue doing that. And now, I want to ask the most important question, going back to what I was asking earlier on. And, and you've been very good at managing how to answer the questions. The question right now is, with opening in six countries all at the same time, are you guys profitable? Mm. Um, obviously, we have two different kinds of markets. We have the two alpha markets, we call them, Thailand and Singapore, mm -hmm. and the new expansion market. So you have to treat them differently because in the Philippines, we're just for two weeks, right? Thailand and uh, Singapore are both break even, mm -hmm. right? Whether I'm profitable or not, I can choose every month, right? Depending on how much I spend on marketing. Right now, our focus is growth, but it's a sensible and sustainable focus because we're profitable on the unit economic level. Um, all the new markets are more than on track to break even in under two years. I think Philippines has a strong chance to break even in under one year. And that shows you about the robustness of the underlying business model. Looks like a lot of people are going to be enjoying some deep discounts very soon. Again, guys, thank you so much for coming over to the Philippines and giving more Filipinos the freedom to eat at a more affordable rate at the best time that they want. Again, guys, thank, thank you so much. much. Thank, thank, so much. thank you for having thank us. Much. Thanks so much. Thank you. Good luck to eat you, guys. Good luck to eat you. Eating out has just gotten yummier. Now that you can eat at your favorite restaurant, at a fraction of the regular price. I'm RJ Ledesma. Join me again next week for another Bright Idea.